In this video, we're going to look at the Fibonacci sequence and talk a little bit about matrices and how we could use a matrix to find um, terms of a Fibonacci sequence. So hopefully you've seen the Fibonacci sequence at some point. It starts off with 0 and 1, and then the next element of the sequence is the sum of the previous two elements. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to notate these elements using y and a subscript. So this first number in the sequence, we're going to notate that y sub 0. And that's going to be y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, etc. All right, so the important thing to notice is that we're starting at y sub 3. And then we've got, you know, generic elements up here, right? So somewhere up here, we're going to have the element y sub k, dot, 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 right? And then after that will be the element y sub k plus 1, y sub k plus 2. So one way we, we could think about a formula for the Fibonacci sequence is we could say that y sub k plus 2 is equal to y sub k plus y sub k plus 1. And this is just a generic way of saying that an element can be found by adding the two preceding elements of the sequence. Now, if I wanted to figure out the 100th term of the Fibonacci sequence, I could just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. Um, but is there a quicker way, right? Is there some way, some formula I could use to find the 100th term? And that's really the question that we want to answer or to find any generic term. So before we proceed, a little thing on our notation here. If I did want to find the 100th term, If I'm saying this is the first term, and this is the second term, third term, fourth term, the 100th term in my notation would be y sub 99, right? Because the first term is y sub 0. The second term is y sub 1. So something to keep in mind as, as we go forward. So what I want to do next is I want to define a column matrix. And I want to define this column matrix u sub k. And that is going to be comprised of two elements, y sub k and y sub k plus 1. Okay, So the vector u0 is going to be y0, y1. So it's going to be 0, 1. All right, u sub 1 is going to be y1, y2. So that's going to be y1 is the second element and the third element, so that's going to be 1, 1. I'll do one more just for clarity here. So u2 is going to be y2, which is the third number in the list, and y3, so 1, 2. So in general, we could say the vector uk is going to be y sub k, y sub k plus 1. So now what we want to try to do is make a difference equation. So remember, a difference equation is a situation where x sub k plus 1 can be found by taking a matrix A and multiplying it by x sub k. So for us, this is going to be the u sub k plus 1 is found by taking some matrix A and multiplying it by u sub k. All right, so to do that, we're going to use the equation that we had a second ago. We're going to use this equation right here. But we're going to introduce another equation, which is going to seem trivial, but you'll see why it's going to help us make this matrix A. So certainly we'd all agree that y sub k plus 1 is equal to y sub k plus 1. All right, then we have this equation, y sub k plus 2 is equal to... Um, y sub k plus y sub k plus 1. All right, so what we want to do is we want to put these two equations together into a system of equations. So we could say that u sub k plus 1 is equal to the vector y 
sub k plus 1, y sub k plus 2. Remember how we defined u sub k, right? u sub k is y sub k, y sub k plus 1. So u sub k plus 1 would be y sub k plus 1, y sub k plus 2. All right, so we're going to use these formulas now. So we've got y sub k plus 1. Now, just for clarity here, I'm going to write 0 y sub k, right? My top equation doesn't have any y sub k's. And I've got 1 y sub k plus 1. And then my bottom equation has got y sub k plus y sub k plus 1. Can you see where the matrix A is going to come from here? Can you see it? All right, so we can write this as a matrix equation with our coefficients multiplied by y sub k, y sub k plus 1. You might want to pause the video and just stop and take a look at that and see if this makes sense. So what do we have here, right? y sub k plus 1, y sub k plus 2 is our vector u sub k plus 1. Let's go ahead and call this matrix A, and then this vector right here is U sub K. Pretty nifty, all right? So we have a difference equation that will allow us to find the um, terms of the Fibonacci sequence. Let's test this out. So let's just start from the beginning. Let's say I wanted to find U sub 1. Well, we could just get that from here, but let's, let's see this in action here, all right? So U sub 1 is going to be A times U sub 0. 0, 1, 1, 1. U sub 0 is y sub 0, y sub 1. So remember, this was y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2, etc. So if we multiply these together, we get 0 plus 1, and 0 plus 1, we get 1, 1, which is y sub 1, y sub 2 those two guys okay pretty neat then we could find u sub 2 by taking a times u sub 1 so 0 1 1 1 kind of think about how this is working it's kind of interesting when you look at it so let's put 1 1 in there it's a little bit hard to see with all the ones till we get to the twos but so the first entry is going to be zero of these so none of these and one of this whatever this entry is right here so basically it's going to duplicate whatever this entry is here which is what we want um, because we want that entry to show up again because of how these are defined right because remember u sub k plus one is going to be y sub k plus 1, y sub k plus 2. So this entry, this k plus 1 entry right here, is showing up as the second entry in u sub k, and it's showing up as the first entry in u sub k plus 1. All right, so we want this last entry in u sub 2 to show up as the or in uh, u sub 1 to show up as the first entry in u sub 2. Again, it's a little bit weird with all the ones, but that's what's happening. Now, how are we going to get this entry? Well, it's going to be 1 of these plus 1 of these. Well, 1 of these, that's the previous term, and 1 of these, that's the previous term. So it ends up adding the two previous terms, which is exactly the formula for Fibonacci, right? Let's do one more so we can see, see this without so many 1s and zeros there. Okay, so we have a times 1, 2. Right, so we're expecting to get these two entries right here, 2, 3. So again, when I take that row times that column, I'm going to get 0 of these entries and 1 of those, which is exactly what I want. I want that entry to repeat, that 2. Now I want the next one to be a 3. So I want to end up adding 1 of these plus 1 of these. Well, that's what this row does, right? One of these plus one of those. So one, two, one times one plus one times two is going to give me what I want, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So now you've probably seen this with a difference equation before, but let's go ahead and write it out. We saw that 
u sub 1 is a times u sub 0. And if I want to find u sub 2, that's a times u sub 1. But u sub 1 is a times u sub 0. So u sub 2 is a squared times u sub 0. You can kind of see the pattern here. Let's do one more. u sub 3 is going to be a times u sub 2. But we just discovered that u sub 2 is a squared u sub 0. So a3 is, or u3 is a to the third times u sub 0. So in general, we could find u to the k by taking a to the k times u sub 0. So let's say we want to use this to find the 15th term of the Fibonacci sequence. Find the 15th term. So remember, look at these y subscripts. What y subscript is that going to be? So the 15th term is going to be y sub 14. Now, y sub 14 is going to show up in two different u vectors, right? We could do u sub 14, and it will show up as this first entry. Or we could do u sub 13, and it would show up as the second entry, right? So you could do it either way you want, and, and it should work. Matter of fact, maybe we'll write both ways down. OK, so if I want to find y sub 14, I could find u sub 14 which is going to be y14, y15. So the 15th term is going to be this guy right here. So to find that, I'm going to take a to the 14th power times u sub 0, which is 0, 1. All right, so a to the 14th power. Now I'm going to use technology for this. And we'll talk about taking these things to the 14th power here in a second. Um, all right. All right, so I just used Symbolab here, and I put a to the 14th power times u sub 0. And it came out to be 377 over 610. All right, so we get 377 over 610. So our... 15th term is y sub 14, which is 377. Now remember, the other way you could do this is you could find u sub 13. So u sub 13 would give you y sub 13, y sub 14. So we could also find y sub 14, which is the 15th term, by doing a to the 13th power x sub 0. So we can go back and plug this in. a sub 13th power x sub 0. Let's go check that out. So if we change this to the 13th power, we're going to get the vector 233, 377. 233, 377. So there it shows up as our second entry in u sub 13. So let's just check it out. Is that the 15th term? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There it is. That's the 15th term. Or y sub 14. Pretty cool. OK, now if we go back, let's say I wanted to find the 100th term. Right? So I come back over here, and I do to the 99th, even with uh, symbol lab here. Matrix power too high to compute. Can't do it. I'm only asking for the 100th term here, right? It's not like I'm asking for the world. So the question is, how could we make the computing power a little bit easier, right? How could we make this easier to compute? So if you remember, we have um, this idea of a matrix being diagonalizable if there exists a matrix D that's a diagonal matrix, 
that's similar to A. All right, so A and D are similar. Actually, this is the definition of similarity here. Similar. And um, D is a diagonal matrix. Do you remember how to calculate the entries on the diagonal matrix of D? They are the eigenvalues. Right? These are the eigenvalues. A is only a 2 by 2, so we're looking for maybe two eigenvalues there, if it's diagonalizable. So that's going to be the next task, is to um, think about what would be the, or to calculate, what would be the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix A so that we can um, expand our formula for the Fibonacci sequence and continue to work with that and maybe derive something even a little bit more concise on how to calculate a certain term of the Fibonacci sequence. All right, so have fun with that.